Hey guys, Jeff from Home Renovision. Working in the rain today, that's awesome. A Little bit of fall rain ain't gonna stop us. We got an outdoor project. We're gonna be putting in a step for our deck and it's basically concrete blocks. We're gonna dig a hole, we're gonna backfill, we're gonna fill it, we're gonna tamp it, we're gonna lay the stone and then we're gonna build a cedar step that sits on top of that. Because it's four season climate, we want everything to be able to raise and settle with the frost. So that is the goal. <laughs> um, when you're doing a project like this though, use a little bit of safety when working with a shovel. Don't wear flip flops. I've still got a broken toe. We're working on healing. It's gonna take a while because I don't stop working. So Matt is gonna come and dig a hole for me and get all this prepped. Okay, so we're, we're in good shape. Uh, my son was a little overzealous getting all the things prepped for me. And he put a little bit too much of this uh, stone dust down here. And that's fine, right? Here we are, we're good. Uh, we just had him back it out a little bit, level this off. Here's the deal. This is not about rocket science, right? This is just about creating a place where we can set the step so that the total height of the step is half the height of the rise of the deck. So with the stones in place, my deck is 16 and a half, and I have a two by eight with a one inch board going on top. So it ends up at eight and a half inches on top of the stone. So 16 and a half, uh, I'm close enough. I'm not gonna really sweat it, okay? Nothing's ever gonna be perfect around a deck anyway because the ground's never level. So it's just a matter of doing the best you can with what you got. We're gonna alternate the size of the stones. Not get too picky here. Now, in a lot of cases, if you're gonna be doing paper stone like this, you're gonna to wanna to be using a, um, like a setting sand. But in this kind of environment, I'm gonna show you a great cheat so you can just get things done and move on with your day. And that is this. So now we look at it and we're like, okay, we have a problem here. This corner's too high. We're gonna just go like that. Okay, and then that corner here is too high. I'm gonna dig it out a little bit. Go like that. Oops, collapsed it again, didn't I? Right now. Boom. Okay, make them flat. Perfect. Every time. All right. Oh, yeah. Just backfilling with some material here now. Okay. This uh, limestone screen, generally speaking, when it gets wet, it gets, has a bit of a concrete factor to it. All right, this isn't traditional. This isn't what you use on regular pavers. But for this environment, we're fine. Knowing then from the beginning means this. Uh, when I'm all finished this project back here, we're covering all this mud with landscape cloth. We're gonna pin it down. And we're gonna put decorative stone everywhere so we don't have grass to cut. Okay guys, here I am in my little box and I'm just trying to protect my wood. So we're gonna sand our boards. We're gonna use the pressure treated lumber, make like a knee wall with some seven inches. Boom, right, make a box. We're gonna cap it with these boards. And then we're gonna skirt the face with my one by eight cedar. Make sure you sand. That's what the pros do. especially when you get your product from Home Depot. <coughs> Slim pickings this time of year, I'm telling you. My goodness. All right. Okay. 
Okay, so we got that, we got that, that's that. Here are those. Okay. Now the step is actually 32. I probably could have got away with just one in the middle, but you know what? I kind of like doing a little bit overkill on stairs. Line up with the outside. Lots of support for inside. We'll just tack all this together. Here we go. Most important part here is the surface. We're going to call this our, our nailing, our surface for the deck boards. So use the deck board to make sure everything's nice and flush. Here we go. Now generally when you're framing things, you want one nail or screw for every two pieces of material. But this is a little bit different because it's just a stair box. Make sure I'm flat. I'm not oh, as concerned with the structural load because it's going from the step to more than enough wood right onto my pavers. And everything here is gonna be just fine regardless of how many fasteners I use just due to gravity. Nice. Bloody foot. Okay. I don't want to have ridges up here. If I can avoid it, so. Oh, wow, unbelievable. If you're wondering what the hell I'm doing out here, it's because I'm getting ready to go down south again for the winter. We've got some projects down there we can't wait to get at. And I have got to get all of this finished before I'm allowed to leave. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's go with two inches as the overhang. How's that? Really close. Now you might be asking, hey, I thought we were using a hidden deck system. And we are, except for this. We have, um, we have a nosing, and so we wanna have the, the wood attached with a bigger head on the top, just like we did around the perimeter. And this is not the time to worry about it. Stairs, generally speaking, don't last as long. And they're so easy to replace. No need to get your knickers in a knot, you know what I mean? Here we go. Uh, I gotta face this with my one by eight seater. Perfect 28. Nicely done, Matt. Oh. So what we do with this, good old fashioned math. Okay, 28, this material is three quarter, consider it one inch. So you want to make it, you want to cut it 30. And because we have plenty, let's cut it 31 or 32. Yeah, so if we're cutting at 31, we'll go cut to, it 32. Go to 32, what the hell, we got lots we're of We're along today, so let's just go 33. Let's just, whatever you want to do. 32, 31, 32, 30, 32. 32. 32. When you cut this thing, of course, it's you're backwards because you want to use this yeah. as your cutting guide. And you gotta put a 45 on that saw. I don't think you can. Yeah, you can. Really? Yeah. Right here oh, on the what am I saying? Right here on the front. Turn the table to 45. And not more. There. You good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's your cut. Here we go. Okay, Matt, come here, I want to show you something. Oh, come here. You're gonna learn something really good today. Right here on the saw guide. It says 45 right here. Yep. See that? Mm -hmm. That's where the blade cuts on the 45. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna line it up with our pencil mark. We're gonna find out if it cuts 45 at the top or the bottom of the wood. All right, I'm pretty sure it's at the top. That's why we made it longer. Let's do this. All right. Definitely at the bottom. Okay, so it cuts the top where the pencil mark is. So remember, our design here, my measuring tape, was to go with a 28 from cut to cut, and a little bit of an overhang. Here we go, I'm gonna go with 28 and an eighth. And we'll do the same thing. All right, and 
that should be a perfect face. All right, so what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna line up my miter on the outside edge, okay? I'm just gonna put a pencil mark back here. I'm gonna use my scrap. Note to self, whenever you're working, always cut the longest piece first. Here we go. Now we got that. So let me just double check. Here's my stair. It's actually the back. Ugh. Let's just might as well do this properly. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely over. All right. I have cut that about three eighths wider than I wanted to. So I'm gonna go like this. Mark three eighths, put that pencil line on there. Give this one more cut. Put the blade where I want it. Oop, still I need to take a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna need another outside edge. Get away from the knot. Okay, it's one good cut. I'm just gonna do a visual. Pencil mark the back. Okay, those are both straight cuts. This one. I'm just gonna throw some face screws away from the edge. I know this wood is cupped, I know it's cracked, I know it's gonna even split. So I'm gonna go about three inches in from each side. And just drive that nice and tight. And on each side, away from that, away from this crack. And a couple screws on those sides just to hold everything in place, right? To make it pretty. And there's that crack I'm talking about. Alrighty. Wow. Okay. Boom. Okay. Well, there we go. Now we gotta do is set it in place. Now remember the goal here is to create a box that's smaller than the pad that you create by a couple of inches. And here's why, especially if you have grass, okay? Because you wanna be able to come out with your little trimmer, trim your grass, and ideally not have to get it up against the wood and start cutting lines in your, in your cedar, okay? So there's a couple of considerations here. One, you want the rise and the run of your stair to be pretty standard, eight to eight and a half. Okay, you want it to be half the distance of the entire rise of the, of the deck. So do your math. I know this is crazy. It, the rule is 27, all right? So when you're building stairs, think of this. The body has this natural tendency to take this step and have about 11 inch to 12 inch stair. The, the shorter the rise, the deeper the stair, okay? Because you're, you're lifting and you're swinging and the body will do real natural, boom to boom, all right? If it's a smaller step, you'll go a little bit of a step and you'll take a wider step every time. So engineers have learned the math of 27. So you take two times your rise, whatever's balanced, okay, so your rise is seven and a half, that's 15. So then your step needs to be 12. That's simple. If your rise is three inches, six, your step needs to be 21. That's the math, okay? So whatever your, your rise versus your run is, just take your rise, divide it in the number of steps, and so none of them are bigger than eight to eight and a quarter. Okay, and then take the remainder, boom, cut it in half, that's how high your step has to be. It's a piece of cake.
The code is this, every step has to be the same within a quarter of an inch. End the discussion. Because if you're going upstairs and your last step is too short, you fall on your face. If you're coming downstairs and it's too short, you fall on your face, right? So do yourself a favor, don't fall on your face. Make everything balanced. Cheers.